Oh, baby, I'm back, large and in charge. Ooh, just went to Denver, hung out with my sister, my fam, my brother-in-law, who's amazing. He's like a freak of nature, Superman. It's essentially Superman in the flesh, right before us, my brother-in-law. He owns his own uh, like plastic surgeon clinic thing where he does dental rebuilding when people like get their face blown off. He rebuilds it back, amazing. I sat him down. I said, look, here's what you need to do. You need to quit that. You need to quit your job. Let it all go. And you need to go to that tavern and buy up as many heroes on DeFi Kingdoms as humanly possible. My sister was like, you know, Grady, are you sure? Didn't you lose like $2 million in crypto? Are you sure you should be doing that? I was like, <clears throat> absolutely. Of course, without question. Here's what we do in this house. We, we scrounge up every last penny in that checking account and we send it all into DeFi Kingdoms, baby. Buy up all the heroes in the tavern. You got this. You can do it. Here's what we do, baby. And then I get home. I come home, you know, get home at like 3 a.m. Did get some sleep, you know? And the next thing I know, I'm getting my phone's blowing up. My kids are like, hey, dad, you gotta pick us up. Cross country practice. And I was like, ooh, you are disturbing me. As I'm leveling my heroes, you must wait and I will come. And then they said, dad, the coach has to wait on us. He, he's got a doctor's appointment he's gotta go to. True story, true story. He's got a doctor's appointment. I said, look, we can't let precious minutes and seconds go by without our heroes leveled up. When they're time, when it's time to level them up, all of, all else in the world must come to a stop. And you must wait. You must be late to your doctor's appointment while I level up my heroes, baby. Can't do it. So then I got there. Got, can't delay. Can't delay such things from happening. I got there. He wasn't a happy camper. 20 minutes late. He had to wait a good 20 minutes while I was leveling my heroes. Things we gotta deal with in life, man. <sighs> gotta focus on the more important things. You gotta be, you gotta dig deep. You gotta be determined. You gotta be focused. You can't let such things distract you. <sighs> yeah, baby. My kids told me to make sure I said that on my next video. <laughs> How about those thumbnails? On the, you know, I'm just driving in the car, holding my phone, doing a video. <laughs> and the thumbnails were like, <laughs> I love it. It's perfect. Ideal, amazing. Maybe one day I'll get like an employee to help me, you know, edit my videos. I was just on with the brown gent, baby. Brown gent, amazing. We were only on for like three and a half hours. That was all. <sighs> videos only two hours. Man, he's amazing. He's been helping me out. He even got on here showing me how to do stuff on, on whatever this is called, Canva. Canva. And I still don't know what the hell I'm doing, but there it is, baby. Okay, this proposal passed. So much going on. I don't even know where to start. My head's spinning. I mean, I go away for one weekend. And the whole world's turned upside down. DeFi Kingdoms, baby. Nothing but good news. All kinds of good stuff going. I love it. They keep being resilient. They keep grinding. They keep pushing forward. That's why I love the team. They're resilient. They're hardworking. They're just going. They're creating a foundation. They're becoming more and more stable over time. It's awesome. They're coming more and more fortified. They have, they're getting all their ducks in a row. They're putting in systems and processes being put in place. We got Wisdom Gaming. We got Purdy Sage, baby, in the house. Pur he's... I, he says he needs to change his name. Uh-uh. Professional. Pervy Sage. My favorite guy. I love that guy. Pervy Sage. When he died, my heart was broken. I cried. I shed a tear for Pervy Sage. I don't think the dude needs to change his name. You tell me what you think. Pervy Sage in the house. Developing. Give him a question. PVP, baby. So I sat down with my kids. We sat them down. And I had them explain to me all about all their games that they're into. League of Legends and Minecraft and Roblox and Monster... Uh like a monster turnstile, you know, game. All this and that, all these different games. They're playing, you know, you know what? I'm like, hey, DeFi Kingdoms encompasses them all, baby. Encompasses them all. Legends of Zelda, all of it, baby. Encompasses all of it within one game. All these games we looked at, you know, Minecraft, like 800 million users, 800 million people doing that. Whew. Guess how many people are doing DeFi Kingdoms? 5,000. 5,000 daily active users. Just imagine. Just sit here and think. What could happen? We got Wisdom Gaming, who has like an arena for esports gaming. We got the Olympics. We're going to have esports gaming in the next Olympics. Or, or maybe two Olympics, but maybe the next Olympics. It's actually going to be an Olympic sport. Hmm. We got like the company that focuses on esports that has, I think, like the largest arena in the country where people go and they do competitive tournaments in game of esports gaming. We got those same guys developing on DeFi Kingdoms. Can I get a booyah? Just imagine. But all these different things, the PVP, PVE, all these things being encompassed all in one game, all the strategy, all the different things happen. Like Legends of Zelda, you're traveling around. It's not just one guy. It's not just one uniform game that we all play and it's all just 
It's all just the same for everyone. Uh uh. This is like a history book, a metaverse being developed uh, with land built. We got shout out, big shout out to Bogside Chats. And they had Adventures of DeFi Kingdoms on there. They had Nindorf. They had Raf on there. They're talking DeFi Kingdoms. They're talking PvP, PvE. They're talking buildings, all this and that that we can do with lands and our heroes and Gen Zeros. All kinds of stuff happening. Mind blowing what could happen. So I just, I'm sitting here just fantasizing in bed. I'm sitting in bed fantasizing about all the different things that could, that this game could actually encompass all the potential upside, all the amazingness that could happen. Blows my mind. They showed me some of the YouTubers. They got like millions and tens of millions of followers. Woo! Just imagine. Getting, they, they showed another YouTuber pops up. You know, they showed me Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast, baby. And I'd seen him before <laughs> because they watch him sometimes. They're like, this is the number one YouTuber, number one guy. He's just awesome. He's got all kinds of channels. All the, and, and he's the biggest one. So, ooh, that caught my attention. You know, what, what, are the, what are the attributes of the top YouTubers? Well, you look at Mr. Beast, you know, I'm paying attention. He, let's look at the best. Let's look at how he's doing it. How is he doing it? Well, right off the bat, you know what I come to find out? The dude's generous. He's caring. He's a genuinely caring, compassionate guy towards people. He gives away all his money, which is crazy. Fun. Awesome stuff. So what happens? You follow the golden rule. You look out for the best interests of others over your own best interests. You don't just be self-focused and be scheming and conniving. Right? When you go about business. Are those the ones who are the most successful in life? Yep. Just sit on that for a minute. You follow the golden rule. You look out for the best interests of others, even over your own best interests. What happens? Everyone trusts you. Everyone likes you. Everyone wants to be with you. Everyone wants to do business with you. Everyone wants to partner with you. That's how business works. You don't look at the five minutes in front of your own face and just try to make a quick buck. Ooh, how can I make a, like a car dealer? Who, ooh, here's a piece of meat coming onto the car lot. Let me try and screw him over. Ooh, I'm gonna lie to him about the car. Boom, he, he can make money five minutes in front of his face. Ooh, he sold a car that he couldn't sell because he's being shady. He didn't tell him about things wrong with the car. He made a quick buck. Guess what happens to his reputation? Does anyone ever wanna do business with him? All the bad, all the bad vibes that go out about that car dealer. Don't do business with that guy. Eventually, that's why most all the car dealers are broke. Believe me, used to be one. Know all about it, been screwed over. I always have to learn things the hard way. Not the sharpest stick in the wood pile. Versus when you do business, when you create crypto projects, when you're legit, when you actually care and look out for the best interests of others, even over your own best interests, like I view the team of DeFi Kingdoms doing. They just, they, they just let all their lock tokens, essentially this proposal, they, they I don't know exactly how much lock tokens the team owned and the project itself actually had, but I think it's quite a lot, quite a bit. I thought it was over 50%, but someone said, no, they didn't think so. Maybe that's like counting his friend. That's a question I have. You know, his buddy that, you know, was supposed to be Dreamer's address, but he, his Dreamer's address on the white paper was actually his buddy that held that initial liquidity and all that ragam, you know, crazy. I think his buddy just like forfeited all of that. That's a good, he said the buddy was, will. I remember him saying when all this went down back a few months ago, May, whenever it was, or April, I think early May, all this and that happened. And the buddy said he's willing to just let it all go. He'd already, he put up, I think, 15 or $50,000 in liquidity to start in the pro beginning of the project. And he made millions from that. And he said, okay, you, you can have it. That was cool, I think. That's probably a significant amount of the lock jewel. I don't know, but I just know the team has a lot of that lock jewel. Jewel is the more profitable coin. I think this was the right move for the best of the ecosystem. It's more uniform now. Now, Jewel's gonna be deflationary. That's gonna be the main token you wanna to own. But Jewel won't have as much in-game utility. It won't have as much overall utility. It'll be used for gas fees, especially in Crystalville, I think. It's also gonna be used for gas fees on Clayton. That's all still gotta be worked out though on the Clayton side. They were gonna do a subnet type thing on Clayton, but I don't think so. I think they wanna stay. They do have that. That might actually still happen, but I think they wanna stay on the main chain. So what they'll do is a Jewel pass through. Uh, and so essentially, Jewel is gonna be burned one way or another on Clayton as well for the gas fees. It's also the governance token. It's deflationary. There's only going to be 125 million Joule ever in existence. Crystal. So Joule essentially is, is a different token, essentially. And that's going to be the token that all the people that don't want to be involved in the game are the investors that don't actually want to play the game. That's what they're going to want to buy. They're going to, they can stake it. They can provide liquidity. They can get li different liquidity pools. Now Joule essentially is being replaced by Crystal, okay, because everyone's going to end up moving all their heroes to Crystalville and then to Serendale 
okay? And so the essentially what they initially said long ago when there's all, all the concern about the jewel unlocking release that's gonna triple, almost triple the supply over this next year, okay? Today's September. It was gonna be sometime like this month, next month. All this massive jewel unlocking was gonna start. Well, the team said, hey, we'll deal with this. It'll be all right. There will never be some big massive jewel unlocking. They told us that several times. Guess what? They provided the perfect solution. Not only did they were they selfless in letting the jewel go, essentially, which will most likely be the more valuable token in the long run overall, I would say probably, okay? And they're, they're basically getting crystal and this new coin that's also replacing jewel. So crystal, think of it as crystal and the new coin. Are, those are the two coins that are replacing jewel, essentially, between the two realms. Okay. And now, <clears throat> as far as value goes, there's still tons of value in crystal. Okay. And the new coin that jewel's replacing, that's going to have all the in-game mechanics. That's what we're going to need to play the game. That's actually going to have the use case. Jewel is going to have plenty of use case as well, not just besides governing and gas fees. It'll be more as well. And the more we have locked up, you know, with the jeweler, the better, the, the more in-game benefits we can potentially get, the more bonuses we can get, different things. They're, they're going to continue to develop and create, develop and create. So many things going on. It's so bullish. I think it was perfect. Now, so now we're going to have a max amount of 250 crystal, a max amount of 200, 250 million crystal, 250 million. And so every single time a new uh, kingdom or whatever world is, is created, like once, hopefully going to come to Polygon, I think, more of a futuristic thing. Frisky Fox kind of mentioned. Who knows? That's way down the road. And we'll have more uh, kingdoms developed. Okay. And <clears throat> so and as more adoption comes, just imagine. But Jewel is going to be king. Jewel's gonna be the most valuable coin we're gonna to wanna to own, okay? And so, price prediction. Jewel, where could it go in the future? I could see it blow way past all-time highs. I could see someday Jewel have, being worth 100 bucks per coin, potentially, someday. I could see it being worth even more, 1,000 bucks per coin. No limit, I mean, it's unbelievable. It's gonna be deflationary. It's just phenomenal, all of it. Now, Crystal, what about Crystal? What about this other clay token that's replacing Jewel? I think they could also blow past all-time highs, both of them. I think they could. I, I think the upside is easily, easily there, easily. So I think both will be extremely valuable. I think gold is going to be extremely valuable. And, and we see. So shout out to, man, Boxside Chats. I watched that thing like four times. Five, I actually think I watched it five times. Just kept because there's so much alpha. They talk, you know, they're just awesome. And I, I was like looking at it like, man, they need to get more views. People, get onto those. They're like, these guys are dogs in the game. They're awesome. Okay. And Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms, that's Nindorf and Raph. They're the guys that created this site, right? So you come here and you come here to market data, market data. And then you come to, you can look at the DFK items. Okay. Right now. <clears throat> so it was happening to where a lot of this revolved around uh, like the contest, especially with stamina potions. This, the value of the stamina potions were following the contest a lot. Okay, if it's if it was a normalized stamina one, that day there's not as much stam, stamina potions being made. When it's like a single hero or even a single wallet contest, you would see people mowing through those stamina potions competing for those contests. That was so fun. Can't wait till that comes back. But now, where does all this revolve around? It largely revolves around the stone carver. I think it's brilliant that he's just not out there all the time. He comes out there with set amount of times, okay, and you have to catch him. You have to be sure to catch him. Okay, so right now, he's been gone. He's been gone. The stone carver's not there. Where's he at? He's still got like three more days. It's been, it's already been like three days since he's he's been around. So what happens? We see the value of the items go down. We see the value of the gold go down. Okay, all these different items, except for Swift Thistle, people are still buying that bad boy. One Swift Thistle's worth 0.57 Jewel. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's why I'm still questing all my guys, all my heroes on uh, Serendale. Okay, because look at this price difference on all these items, like uh, Shimmer Skin. Okay, Shimmer Skin is worth 0.25 Jewel on Serendale. What's it worth on Crystalville? On Crystalville, right here, it's worth 0 0.03. So we're talking almost one-tenth the value. Not quite, like one-ninth the value on Crystalville versus Serendale. So because we can't bridge the Shimmer, the shimmer Skin from Crystalville to Serendale yet, I don't even know if that's ever going to come. I mean, for now. Maybe because they're trying to get Serendale 2.0 done so fast. Maybe, I mean, then, but what is hopefully going to happen sooner rather than later? The stone carver will come to Crystalville. Then we won't have to, then we can just do everything 
and, and duels too. Then we can just do, and gardening, okay? So they hit on that today. The reason why gardening, why isn't it there? Why isn't it in Crystalville yet? Where's gardening at? We need gardening, baby. Okay, here's why. They're upgrading the whole entire contract for gardening. We're gonna be able to send more and and not just for gardening, but for everything. So we're gonna be able to send out like multiple gardeners out at a time and multiple just heroes out. I think my takeaway is with all the questing, we can just like do it all at once somehow. Like send out all our heroes questing all at once and then we can collect them all at once. Whew, that'll be a dream, like a dream come true, baby. Can't wait. So all of that is delaying why gardening hasn't happened yet on Christopher because they're creating these new, uh, like new code essentially, or a new way of doing gardening. And it's gonna have multiple functions too of gardening. That's cool. Woo, that's exciting. Uh, we'll be able to get jewel and crystal and just different things from the quest fund. All these cool things going on in the game. That's exciting. So, but until then, you look at this, right? And you see right now, all the items are down, okay? They're down on Serendale and they're, they're worth way more on Serendale for the most part. Okay, so, and gold, right? <clears throat> gold is quite a bit, woo. Hang on a second. We got <gasps> gold's going up on Crystalville. Woo! It's getting close, right? One, two, three zeros, two zeros. Oh my gosh. No, that's crystal. Sorry. Okay. So gold is worth 0. 0.0006 joule on Crystalville. But on Serendale, it's worth 0. 0.001. So it's almost double the price, almost, on Serendale. Okay. All that's, so there's going to be some ARB opportunities, especially like with the shimmer skin. Okay, so that's why you see here, the price is going up right now on Crystalville. Because hey, when the parity comes, whew, there's gonna be arbitrage opportunities. You're just gonna be better off, uh, you know, buying the stuff right now and not selling your stuff right now, especially like your gold on Crystalville and especially like your shimmer skin. I did buy up a bunch of that. Okay, and look, shimmer skin is down 13.28% today from yesterday, percent change. I'm guessing that's like daily percent change. It's down. Okay, 20, oh, nice, look at that. Six hours, it's, oh, it's up 17% in the last six hours, but in the last 24 hours, it's down 13%. Why? Because the stone carver's not around. Okay, so now's the time to be accumulating gold, accumulating all these items, okay? You could provide liquidity for the items and, and then undo the liquidity if you want when the stone carver comes out. All different kinds of things you can do. Okay, or you could just leave the liquidity in there the whole time and get all the fees when, and ignore the stone carver and just have a bunch of liquidity in there and be making lots of fees. I have a lot of liquidity going on Crystalville, by the way, with gold. I tried it out. It's not as profitable, but it's still good. I'm up on all my items and I'm up on the gold, but it's just like, it's not as mind blowing as I was doing before with, with Crystal and Jewel. I think it's better there, but I have all this gold that I don't want to sell on Crystalville. Why not create liquidity? And I need it. So I bought two more Gen Zeros. I have 10 Gen Zeros now, baby. We're going for broke. We're going to spend all our money. <sighs> Gotta love it. I'm thinking to myself, hey, what? Seems like we might have bottomed already. Maybe. Seems like it, right? Because all this development, all this progress is going on in the game. I feel like when the br bridge hack and all that happened, that was probably going to mark the bottom. But you never know. We could actually hit like a national depression, not just recession, and just be in this terrible bear market for years. That's possible. Who knows? But I think we've hit our bottom. So I'm just, and, and I was talking with Brown Gent. I was on the, with the Brown Gent. He's been helping me out so much. And the Brown Gent's really been paying attention to those to the tavern, those Gen Zeros, baby. And you get a huge shout out. It's hilarious. DFK Quester. Okay, DFK Quester. See these, I can look at the tavern here. I can look. It's just amazing. DFK Quester is amazing. Amazing tool. But I confused it with another new and up and coming tool that's a, like a bot service with Coolio and Zelly or whatever his name is. Shout out to you guys. I'm gonna have them on the show. They're out of town, they're busy, they have real lives. Unlike me, baby. <clears throat> so I'm an idiot, and I, as of course, I'm such an idiot all the time. I have a couple things that I need to correct here from how much of an idiot I am. How many times do I say jewel when I mean to say crystal? How many times do I say like 100 when I mean to say 100 million? How many times do I say Serendale when I mean Crystalville? Or Crystalville when I mean Serendale? Drives me nuts. You know, what's so funny is I listen to all these other YouTubers, right? And I'm listening to them at 1.5x speed. 
which you should, probably should too, and get more content in if you're focused. And I'm like, when people do that, when they mess up and they say it wrong, I'm like, oh, God, I'm like right on the ball. Oof, I'm like perfectly sharp mind. I'm right on it. I'm correcting. Oh, they should know better. Like George, I am George. He does it all the time. He's like, uh, you know, he's like talking and he'll say something and you know that he actually meant to say something else. Like I do all the time. And when I'm watching, I'm like Johnny on it. My mind is sharp. I'm following. And then it's like, no, he needs to know that. And it's like, annoys me. It's like a pet peeve. And then what do I do? I start my own YouTube channel and I do it like worse than anybody I've ever seen, ever. <laughs> I'm like always saying things wrong. What's wrong with my brain? My brain, guys, I don't even get it. I don't know. Okay. So you sit there and watch the video and it's like easy to, to, to criticize it like I do. Like Mr. Critical here, and then look, I'm just a fumbling, bumbling idiot all through my all my videos, all the time. Okay, so here's one thing I did. So funny, even on Discord, I was like confusing. I was combining like DFK Quester and DFK Helper. <laughs> so this Quester is amazing. It is like a bot thing maybe, but I think that's still in beta. Just all this other thing, all these other things it can do is just unbelievable. It'll give you the breakdown of your heroes. It just can do so much. And the brown gent just did a video with uh, Born to Die 007, baby. Born to Die. I was sitting in Denver just like in heaven. All this content, all this DeFi Kingdoms content coming out. I mean, you had the brown gent and boom, Mr. 007 Born to Die and his DFK Quester. Awesome video. Hilarious. Okay, you, you had, uh, you had what's his name? Uh, Sergeant Filthy McNasty, baby, or something like that. Sergeant Filthy McNasty, which I was on his show as well. He had... Uh, Thanos, baby. Thanopolis, the man, the myth, the legend himself, doing debates on bots. Awesome. You got all this awesome content. You have, oh, I always forget this guy. This guy gave me a huge shout out on his channel. I can't even remember his name. I always forget his name. Look at this. Look at that. The thumbnail. I love it. Okay. <laughs> okay. What's this guy's name? C... This guy, I gotta give, I gotta give his channel a big fat shout out. But I can't ever remember his name. I'm like, it doesn't get too much worse than me in names. He, and I saw this kid. This kid starts his channel like months ago on DeFi Kingdoms. And he was doing it on other things, not just DeFi Kingdoms. Bogside Chats. Bog, B-O-G, can't even read that. Bogside Chats. Give them a big fat shout out. Okay, uh, make sure you give them a follow. What is this kid's name? Oh, it's gonna kill me. It's gonna kill me until I find it. I, and I was, I've been watching this ch channel actually for months. I watched him come from nothing. He had like, I remember when he had like four or 500 followers. And now he's got like 1700 followers. Shout out to this guy. Oh, and Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms. They have their own channel as well. Literally the channel, the, the YouTube channel. Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms. Okay. Oh, let's see if I can scroll through my history real quick. My history, baby. View all. <laughs> watch this kid. Yeah, I was in Denver. And I, la I watched his last show. Where's he at? Okay. I'm going to find him. I'm going to find him, baby. I'm going to get it. We're getting it. We're getting close. I feel it. Ah, oh, found it. Okay. This kid. This kid. Okay. It's, uh, it's Chris O. Currency. Chris O. Currency. Love it. Okay. He's he's been improving and improving, improving his channel. Love it. Shout out to that guy. Okay. He's been putting more and more and, and actually quality content on DeFi Kinos. But man, these guys, I'll tell you what, you got all kinds of we you got more guys starting to put out more content on DeFi Kingdoms. You have more developers. Like um, the Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms guys, they're, they're, I think Nindorf maybe helps the Fight Club guy. There's a guy creating something called Fight Club. You got DFK Arena. You've got more developers developing. Guys like Thanos, he was on. I'm going to have him, Thanopolis. I'm going to have him on the channel, baby. He was on with Sergeant Filthy McNasty. Ooh, love that guy. Love that channel. Got, you guys got to give him a shout out. Follow for sure. Okay, all these things going. It's so exciting. So much going. So I'm just sitting there in Denver in heaven because I can't even keep up. I can't even keep. You got Boxside Chats. You got Adventures in DFK. You got Chris O'Currency, baby. You got who else? More guys doing content. You got Sergeant Filthy McNasty. And what's his? He's got a sidekick too. A dude. Huh. I'm so bad with names. Sorry. Shout out to all you guys. I love you guys. So fun. I mean, these are like developers. Nindorf and Raf developed that site. So good. 
It's so awesome to see all the activity starting to increase on this game. Very exciting, amazing. Developers are developing. You got Carlo, who's like selling out every day on his bots. I mean, we're like well over 200 bots now going. Shout out to the bots. It'll make you want to buy more heroes, causes people to be more engaged in the game. It causes more people to actually want to play the game instead of get burnout from quest fatigue. Not good. Quest fatigue is like a cancer to this game. Okay, as we're still in waiting, we're in like a waiting period right now. Okay, and <clears throat> what happens is people just get burnt out with the game. I think we used to have like tens of thousands of daily active users. Maybe even, like at one point on their Discord, they had like 100,000 people on that Discord. And I think it's still like in the 90s, okay? There is way more active users. That's when we're going to see this game thrive is when those people come back to the game. Why did they leave? It started when all the FUD on the project and Frisky Fox and his, and his buddies liquidity, okay? And a lot of people, including like the big people in the space, I am George, you've got like Crypto Man Ran, those guys, they just think this thing's dead. They think it's a dead project. They don't even know that, okay? But look what's happening. The team's getting more solidified. They're getting more secure. They're becoming more and more fortified. They're becoming, they're developing. They're hard at work. They're making massive, massive, massive partnerships. All kinds of bullish things are happening in the game. So the reason why I even did this channel is to show this is for real. Frisky Fox, Dreamer, Hubert, uh, Beetle Dude, Sun Bear. Who is the other guy? Ma starts with an M. Ma the guy that was on the AMA today. You got awesome developers, okay? And they're legit. It's one of the best teams and best projects in all of crypto. And we need to bring the love back to the space, baby. We need to. So that's why I'm always saying like, subscribe, bell button. It helps the out and comment. It helps the algorithm. Once I get a thousand subscribers. So Brown Chen told me today, I need a thousand subscribers and I need like, like 20 or 40,000 hours of my videos viewed, like viewing time on my videos. When that happens, it's going to help the algorithm. So it'll get out more. And I'm going to do very soon. I was maybe going to do it this week. Maybe I still will. Maybe starting even before the weekend is out, I'm going to start my beginner's series, baby steps, ABCs on how I could teaching my mom, somebody like my mom on how she could actually get into the game. A to Z, A to Z, baby. Amazing. Amazing. It'll be, so when we see adoption happen, so right now it's a little harder for adoption because it's not, there's so much change happening. It's okay to kind of let it play out and do the grind. Quest your heroes, baby. Get the bots, get, get yourself in position for this game to explode. And that's my style. I'm just, th this is like practice for me. I'm, so I want to make the channel awesome and legit, full blown. So when there, if and when this game blows up and there is adoption, I wanna be ready. So I, I'm, I'm just putting in the time right now to, to make quality content on the game, but also to learn how to do a YouTube channel. Start slow, learn things the hard way. Eventually I'll have staff, I'm assuming, okay? And I'll wanna monetize the channel to pay for that essentially, and maybe make a living, I don't know. I don't even know. One thing I won't do though is, is compromise my ethics. And I got, it's like so ingrained down deep into my soul. Like I won't do clickbait, Thumbnails that drive me nuts. It makes me not want to click on. I don't even get why people click. It's like I love Crypto Manrian and I'm going to watch him, but I'm like less excited to watch him every day. And and guys like Miles that I love, it's like their thumbnails are so just drive me nuts. And it's like George, I watch them every day for years, and I just see these guys like compromising their morals and their ethics. I still think they're good guys though, like really good guys. But like when money gets in the way, it muddies up the water, right? So I will never function in business where it's not clear waters, baby. So I'll always be totally transparent and all that. And I want to be, if not the best, one of the best, absolute best YouTube channels covering DeFi Kinos with all kinds of alpha and every amount of information. Just being a normal, I'll always be a normal guy, just like you, but having a YouTube channel. I'm never going to lose that. I'm never going to compromise anything to get more clicks and more views. And that's just how I'm going to roll. Can't do it any other way. That's how it is, baby. And it might not, with the five minutes in front of your face perspective, look like that the channel will grow as fast, but I would rather grow the channel in the right way 
and do it right and have loyal followers as well that actually believe and trust me. At least they trust me, you know, that I'm not going to try and pull fast ones and BS that happens because of money. Like, for example, I'll never bring on a sponsor, okay, and, and not be allowed to say something. Like, I always have to be free in what I'm going to say. Freedom of speech. Can't not have it. I just won't function any other way. So, for example, like Crypto Man Ran, he has NordVPN. I'm assuming he makes a pretty nice little chunk of change off that. So what happens if there's a better VPN service? Can he talk about it? Like, okay, so I couldn't, in good conscience, if there's something else better out there, I couldn't, I would have to at least be able to give both options, right? If I'm going to sponsor something and say, hey, check out this VPN, and I'm aware that there's something else actually better, or maybe it's cheaper but not as good, so I just want to at least be able to mention whatever I want to mention. If that makes sense. Like, and treat my audience, my viewers of the channel, the same way I would treat my mom or my son or something and give them, give all the alpha and all the insight and do it. Here's the best way always on how to do everything that I know. I'll always function that way. So I, I'll want to have sponsors on and just spread the love, especially DeFi Kingdoms related sponsors, mostly, I'm guessing, and help them build their business, help them build what they're trying to build, but never like at the expense of excluding other options that might potentially be better for some people. Like, for example, with bots, I use Carlo. Shout out to Carlo. His, wa his waifu bots are just phenomenal for me. But they're more basic and simple. And he's just one guy. He's developing, and he's developing fast. He does a lot. He's phenomenal. Okay. Doing so much. But then you got Diffkey. And then you got other ones, like this DFK Quester. I think we'll be able to do it. You got DFK Earn. You've got this new one coming called DFK Helper. Okay? And they can do more. Uh, they can do more. Than, than the waifu bots. Okay, so I'm just gonna love on all of them unless there's one that I, I don't trust or believe in, okay? I'll be careful with how I talk about anything. I'll try it, but I'll, I need to at least be able to say, hey, I'm not sure about this service. I think this one's better, here's why. And the best, it's, it's just capitalism. The best will win. So, and, that, and that's beautiful. It will help creators not get a corner to a market and dominate unless they're the best. That's a beautiful thing. Others are free to develop as well and create something better or they can work together. So I love all the developers and yes, in some senses they might be <clears throat> competition for each other, but I'm just love them all. And I think they're all good options, but there might be some that's better than others. Um, and I just have to have that type of freedom of speech, <laughs> freedom of speech, baby. Okay. Sorry that I go on so many rabbit trails, rabbit trail King right here. Okay. So, <clears throat> and it's hard. So a guy like Dipke, Thanos, baby, he's got like, I think eight staff members that he hires. So just imagine like faulty poker used to have this awesome tool and I don't even know if it's still going. So when the developers aren't developing on the game, man, things really break down. It's not good. It breaks and it has a trickling effect into DeFi Kingdoms itself, into the game. So the more development we have on the game, so we need to love on those developers. Uh, so it's tough. You know, it's tough. I The developers though, what capitalism does is it causes you to be excellent at what it is you're doing. And competition comes in and it's gonna come. So how do you start a project like that and hire people and develop and do that? It's not easy. It's, and then the risk of it not succeeding or being profitable for you, you're, you might end up losing money. You put in all this blood, sweat and tears and this is the same with business. And you put in blood, sweat and tears and then you end up just losing all your money and your time wasted and your Elbow grease, wasted. So who wants to do it? That means not very many people actually want to do it. So then what happens is you get monopolies that happen, that just dominate the entire space and then they're in control. That's what we don't want. Oh, we could do a business lesson for hours. Okay. So it was exciting, the announcement today about gardening and multi, uh, questing multiple heroes and quests all at the same time and collecting multiple heroes and quests all at the same time. 
It's been amazing just hearing all the news, all the development, seeing everything happening. There's so much vision of what could happen on this game. So just imagine, this game legitimately could have millions and millions and millions of users. Just imagine, just imagine. So much upside to this game. It's so exciting. Oh. One thing too, Brown Jen, you know, he's using this tool, okay? He, and he'll, he'll be posting that video probably anytime. So excited, maybe he already has. Post a video. We did like a two hour long video, baby. Okay, he pointed out, so along with all these awesome things that you can do, like this will, okay, this tool in Adventures in DeFi Kinos, it kind of revolves around the stone carver. So when you come here to the market, you can look at these carving receipts of the stones. And right now, that stone carver has been gone. He's been gone for a while. Okay, so guess what's immediately gonna happen? This will tell you, to craft, when the stone carver comes, here's the current cost to craft, uh, <clears throat> to craft a lesser chaos stone. 3.8 Joule. Well, okay, as those items increase, they will increase when the stone carver is around. So it's usually, you know, between this 3.8, it's around that price to maybe up to five Joule or so. Okay, so the market right now, I can, so the cost to craft this in three days is gonna be 3.8 Joule. Expense in those items that are actually crafting. The market right now, you can go sell it for about eight Joule. The might stone, okay? So this is where we can make real money. And so, okay, and these prices fluctuate all day long. And so what happens is when you come to the market data and, and you look at uh, the DFK items, right now, they're down, they're down. So now is the time to be buying the items or holding the items. Once that stone carver comes out, these items are gonna skyrocket. That's when you wanna sell them, when the stone carver's out. Okay, and that's when the stone carver's already out, it's much cheaper to buy the stones. Okay, when he's gone, it costs more money to buy the stones. If you go to the decks, the trader, and buy them. So now's the time to sell the stones. The time to buy the stones is when the stone carver is out. Does that make sense? Okay, so there's all these market fluctuations that happen, okay, and it's so fun to follow all of this. Like rock root is way down, but it's still better to sell the rock root with the trader, don't sell that for gold, okay? Same, of course, almost always with spider fruit. The ones in red here are saying, don't sell with the vendor, you're gonna make you're gonna make 91% more money. 91% <laughs> more money, or like way more. If you sell your milkweed on the trader than if you do with the vendor, okay? So it's the other way. So when you see these items in green, that's when you want to go to the vendor. Green light vendor is like a discount versus that there's no discount in red. It's the opposite of the discount. So you got Swift Thistle is a premium right now. Unbelievable. That's why I'm questing. And Shimmer Skin is a premium. Not as much as Swift Thistle, but it's a big fat premium. And of course, Milkweed. And then really most all the items as well. Spider fruit, um, spider fruit's number four as far as at a premium. Then you still have rock root and iron scale. Okay, and dark weed, dark weed compared to the vendor. But dark weed is down today 16.4%. So now's the time to buy. And then these items skyrocket when the stone carver comes back out. That's when you want to sell them. So one strategy, so there's all these different strategies to the game. That's what I'm getting to. One strategy, okay, got to log back in here. Is that you can create liquidity, especially, so the stone carver is gone, I think this is the pattern in which it's gone. It goes seven days off. Then it comes on for like less than a day. I think it's like 16 hours. He's there. Then he's gone again for three days, I think three days. Then he comes back for like a day and a half. He's there. Okay. Then he's gone again for another full week. And I don't know if that's a set in stone consistent pattern, but that seems to be the pattern, I think. Okay. So to time these things right, especially when he's gone for the seven days, what you can just do is come here to the marketplace and, and create liquidity with the Druid. You come here to the Druid. Okay. And I have pulled out all my liquidity at, at, here on Serendale because I needed the money to buy the Gen Zeros. And I'm like flat broke just about as far as Jewel goes. So I bought the two Gen Zeros. Now I'm, I'm wanting to get all this liquidity going again because I was just smashing on the liquidity. 
I crushed it. Okay, when I pulled out my eggs, my green eggs, I smashed it. And that was even with me, like putting it in wrong. So when you, when you create the pool, okay, if you're doing the eggs, you can see right here, if you're doing the eggs, you don't want the jewel up top. You want the jewel down here. Okay, this is where you put the jewel. The eggs go on top or any of the non-divisible items. Okay, look, I've got 90 green eggs right here. Okay, I need to get a whole bunch of jewel and I'm just gonna dump all that back in, especially on the eggs, but also like on the swift thistle and on the, okay, the dark weed, right? You put that on top, perfect, okay? So why not? I'll just write it down. Let's do this. Let's do it, baby. Okay, dark weed, writing it down. Okay, and I'm putting in 625 dark weed and 6.63 joule. Supply, baby. Dark weed on top. Okay, so then we got liquidity and I get the fees. I'm doing the same thing in Crystalville with all my gold. <laughs> Just tons of gold and items. So I have the items paired with the gold and it's, it's doing well, but it's not like blowing my mind well. Like before, so when I pulled out my green eggs, like goodness gracious, I think I pulled out, I pulled out like seven more eggs, or maybe it was even 10. I gained 10 eggs and I didn't even hardly lose any jewel at all. In fact, I might've even gained jewel, but those were in there for a while and there's a lot of them. So when you have that amount of, in the, and also on the golden eggs, smashed it. I mean, because every time there's trading activity on those items, okay, it, it gives you like big fees, especially on the eggs. Okay, so so then you can look at this. Look, 625, 624 actually got the positive. It, it, oh, it did take one away. Okay, so right away, I thought I put in 625. That's what I wrote down. Now it says 624. So I've lost one. And the other thing with liquidity, you have to be willing to be patient. So... Like when there's big swings in the market of different items and different things, you have to be willing, okay, to lose the item and gain in jewel or lose the jewel and gain in the item. Like a jewel skyrocketing, okay, in the short term, it can hurt you. But if you're good with having lots of the items and lots of the jewel, you have to be good either way because you might lose a bunch of eggs and gain a ton of jewel or you might lose a ton of jewel and gain in a bunch of eggs. That's kind of what happened here recently. Okay, because lots of sell pressure was happening because everyone was trying to buy the jewel for this vote and th this new, you know, proposal that came. It's going to make jewel more valuable. So everyone's like, oh, let me sell my items and buy more jewel. That's good. Good advice. But hey, if you're patient and you're good with it and you want to let it sit and you're going to make tons of fees, you're going to make and it's just going to be beneficial if you're good with either way happening. Okay, so in the immediate term, you might lose some value like impertinent loss is what they call it. Okay, that could happen, but if you're good with the long term of the items, like right now, we green eggs, you know, they're really low. Good time to buy. That's when it's good to buy. Guess what? They're gonna double in price. It will unequivocally happen. The eggs will double in price once the, the hatcher comes to Crystalville and we can do green eggs and yellow eggs and gold eggs. Gold's gonna double. It's just going to happen. It's almost as sure of a bet as anything you could imagine. The only thing that would stop that from happening is like another hack or black swan event that happens on the project. Otherwise, it's as sure as the sun is coming up tomorrow. The items, the eggs are going to double and triple in value when the use case comes. They're going to 5x. They're going to 10x. When pets, when we can actually use the pets, guess what? They're going to 5x. It's going to happen. So now's the time to be accumulating these things. I think the same, the reason why, like I wanted the Gen Zeros now, instead of later, it's like, man, I don't wanna like miss the boat. I wanna have all the Gen Zeros. So for all I know, those things might jump right back up to 10 grand per hero, per Gen Zero, like floor, okay? So I just think Gen Zeros, baby, that's gonna be like the most valuable part of the game, I think. Like they're gonna be the most valuable hero in the game. So this dark summoning, more news, more alpha, baby. That's gonna make Gen Zeros worth way more. Boxside chats and adventures in DFK. Nine Dwarf, baby. Raph, they gave that all that a shout out. Okay, and we'll be able to use locked, locked tokens and 75% of them are gonna be burned. Okay, so <clears throat> when the devs, like Dreamer, he would always say, man, hold those eggs, baby. Get those pets. 
believe me, we're going to be glad when that day comes and everyone's like massive demand for pets is coming. <laughs> so I can't wait. I can't wait till all this happens. The only thing that's, I mean, it's so sure that all these things are going to go up in value. Eggs will be worth, I mean, they're going to 5x unless a black swan event happens or just frisky fox dies in a plane crash. Okay. Otherwise, you can basically take it to the bank, baby. Take it to the bank. It's happening. We're going to see a massive... So when right now, nobody cares about gold on Crystal Bill much. That's when it's time to buy. When there's the least amount of interest and there's people selling, like I don't know why people would be selling their Gen Zeros and stuff right now. Now's the time to be buying, not selling. Now's the time to be buying Crystal. It's down. Now's the time to summon your heroes on Crystal Bill. What do we say when it was double the price compared to Jewel? Then it was the time to sell the Crystal and buy the Jewel. That's what we said, okay? Because Jewel was like at 18 cents, 19 cents, and Crystal hit 40 cents, okay? That was the time not to buy the Crystal. That's the time to buy the Jewel. Crystal was still bullish. Well, now with all the changes, okay, I mean, that did stab some people in the gut, right? Because now look at Crystal. And the whole market's down. That's caused everything to crash, okay? But Crystal, now's the time to buy the freaking Crystal. Because <laughs> that's the coin we actually need to play the game. And when everything, when there's parity on Crystalville, guess what's going to happen? When there's more people flooding into the game, guess what's going to happen? That's how these things work, baby. You buy the things when they're so stupid cheap. Okay, so like, let's just look right now. Price of eggs are just stupid low. E-G-G, egg. Okay. And Jewel. And Jewel's up, okay? So if I want to buy one egg, 15 Jewel. That's gray egg. How about green egg? We gonna, we gonna be hatching green eggs here at some point? What do you think? 12, 12 Jewel. Uh, yeah, now's the time to buy. Could they go down further? Maybe, possible. All right, this video has probably gone way too long. Love you guys, love, love, love you guys. Crypto Grady out, baby. So much upside to this project, so much, it, it's all bullish, all bullish. I love the idea of the dark summoning, the ability to be able to use locked tokens. I thought 75% like burn, like where you can only use 25% of it was maybe too excessive. I would have thought like 50, 50. That was my thoughts there. I don't know, but just the fact that we can use them if we need to. I mean, just having that option is nice. I think maybe 50, 50, I might start a proposal on that. Crypto Grady out, like subscribe bell button. Love you guys.